If you know who I am, then you know I don't care much for stealthing around the map and not picking every fight I can see. These are my guns and I don't need things like caution getting in the way of me shooting all of them. That said, there's a lot more than one way to skin a super hell dive mission and deliberate with maximum effectiveness. We should strive to learn them all. My name is Commissar Kai and today we're teaming up with the ghost diver himself, Erevin, so we can have a look at how to mesh stealth gameplay with my more aggressive style. Helldivers across the fleet should support each other, and sometimes that means understanding how to play around people with vastly different skill sets. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's drop in and get started. Since I'm about as stealthy as an orbital barrage, for this one we're gonna be looking at both mine and Aravin's perspectives as we go through two of our games. We grabbed up two people from the Discord that have not played Super Helldive on bots before, and we dropped in with a plan. I would take charge of the two FNGs, and we would make as much of a fuss as possible to get all the bots' attention while Erevin snuck off through the map, feeding us intel and taking out objectives. I'll be walking y'all through how I supported Erevin on his ghostly journeys while he's going to chime in on the more in-depth still stuff. First, let's take a look at our initial drop and how we quickly made decisions about how we're going to take on this tyrant factory. So our initial plan was going to include quietly making our way into the super base together to commit to an alpha strike. However, things uh, don't often go according to plan for Helldivers. Once I see the rest of the squad hard engaging with the landing party, I make the decision to flank around to the back of the super base, having recognized this layout as the one we've nicknamed Mordor due to its detector tower in the middle. Around the back, the entrance is only lightly guarded by one machine gun turret, and the following bunker turret along the cliff cannot turn around far enough to engage you giving you full reign over the outpost to begin tearing it to pieces from the inside out. Once the reinforcements get called in though, it begins to become very evident to me that I've lost my opportunity to finish the job on my own, opting to throw myself over the ledge to make the escape while communicating to the rest of the squad that I'll be drawing them away in the process before going about my business roaming the map solo. While our ghost divers off giving LASIK surgery to the eye of Mordor, I was busy playing peekaboo with a factory strider and trying to get my team grouped up so we could take on that initial bot drop and the extra reinforcements from the detector tower. This is where we're going to get into our first team play concept of the video, trait and aggro. If you spend a lot of time in games, this is a concept which should be familiar to y'all. But in case you're unaware, this means that when the bots are chasing our ghost, we're free to move in. When the bots are on us, then the stealth team can go about their business much faster since they don't need to worry about a bot drop getting called in on their heads and can focus on what's in front of them. Like right here, after Erevin took out the detector tower and led most of that bot drop away, me and the commandos were free to move in and clean up whatever was left. Super Outpost has only one fab remaining on west side. Alright, copy that. Let's get up there, y'all. Mine? Through the minefield. Alright, last fabricator's going down now. Let's leave. Good job. Uh, we're gonna head towards the south side. Aravin's clearing out the other side of the map. So let's just keep those bot drops called in on us. Keep some pressure off of him. Follow me, y'all. We're getting out of here. But if we're gonna trade aggro between our stealth team and our main fighting force, then we need to have a good plan of where to position ourselves so that both teams can support each other. Here's the map right after our ghost took down that gunship fabricator and I called for the team to leave the super base. As you can see, Erevin's looking at this side of the map like it's a super stake and he just spent three days crawling towards an outpost. Even though I'm not a huge fan of stealthing around the map, I have to respect what it can do, and that means trusting that he's going to be able to handle these four outposts and these two primary objectives by himself. So if he's doing all that, then what are we meant to do? Well, we're going to position ourselves as close to the center of the map as we can, and hit any objectives that we see along the way. This is so we're always close enough to help out our ghost diver if needed, but it's also going to let us pivot towards whatever objective we want to hit next. If he dies, runs out of ammo, or gets hit by a bot drop in a bad spot, we'll be able to quickly respond without needing to cross half the map first. Likewise, if we're in need of some auto cannon support for a pesky gunship patrol, or if we learn that we can skip a big fabricator to hit the primary objectives, our ghost is going to be able to easily relay that critical information to us, and we'll be able to quickly respond. Even if you don't have the ability to verbalize this type of strategy, all you really need is to be able to read the minimap and make decisions based on what you see. Let's take another look at the map. You can see all the right side objectives are now finished. And the only thing remaining to do is to let the bots taste the sun, an anti-air emplacement, and one big-ass fabricator complex. Notice that K2 is behind the main force and is looking pretty intently at that fabricator complex. I noticed this bit of body language, so I asked him this. It's easy, laser. Alright, cool. Let's start heading towards... 
this outpost and then we'll get the primary. Or should we go to straight to the primary there, Irvin? Uh, you can... You can probably go straight there. Yeah. Right. Safe in the knowledge that K2 will be able to handle those objectives easily as long as we do what comes naturally. Oh boy, here I go killing again. We're free to push to the final primary. There's one more favor our ghost can do for the team while we exercise our Second Amendment rights, and that's to get us a clean extraction. So I'll let you hear how to do it from the man himself. Stealth extraction calls have always been a specialty of the playstyle, and one that I would say gets easier the less teammates hang around that can disturb the patrols marching through. Making my way here to call the bus ensures my team a clean extraction when they eventually arrive. Meanwhile, they hold off the majority of the enemy forces beyond the extraction site, allowing me to sit more comfortably than I'd have otherwise. Once Pelican 1 makes his appearance, I pull away as he hovers, covering the team's approach as I move to regroup one final time with the squad. Having your ride warmed up and ready to go ain't just useful. It's also cinematic as hell once the team is all grouped up and pushing their way off planet. But now let's take a look at a game that went sideways real fast and how having a stealth diver in the squad helped us out of some tough binds while also giving us crucial intel for tackling the super base. I don't know if y'all have felt the absolute pain of dropping in next to a gunship fabricator and a stratagem jammer, but it's a special type of hell that should be reserved for people that don't watch where they're firing with the incendiary breaker. This game was the closest I've come to losing my mind in a long while. And this demon of a bot combo, plus the old plasma cannons on hulks, nearly did me in. Here's some of the highlights for you to enjoy. Feel my pain. Yeah. Oh, I just exploded. I don't even know how I got killed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to engage it and hold a firing line, I will warm up the bus. I just instantly died again. What the fuck is killing over? Nice, nice. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my god. I am so happy that John Helldiver took out the Plasma Hulk factory. But if you like seeing me get blown to pieces and slowly lose my mind, then consider liking the video. That one click is the best way to support the channel and manage democracy by helping spread the word of cooperation and team play to the rest of the fleet. If you'd like to support me more directly, check out my coffee and get exclusive benefits on the Discord, like being able to bug me whenever you'd like, and some swanky badges to let everyone know how much you support capitalism. But let's rewind a bit and see how we got into and out of this mess. When you drop in on a gunship fabricator and a stratagem jammer, that jammer has just jumped to the top of your priority list since it is impossible to destroy the gunship one while it's still up. The jammer disables your hellbomb stratagem so you can't use it. But if we wanna take it out, we're gonna need to escape this bot drop in the gunship so everyone can at least get set up with their support weapons before we move in on the jammer. Thankfully, our ghost diver brought some smoke grenades, which are much better now, but they were still very useful here. And we're able to corral the newbies away from these two objectives. Once we're away, I felt a sense of urgency to get rid of this dang jammer since there was a bot drop pinching us on the edge of the map, and we couldn't use any of our heavy ordnance. So I did what I usually do and ran in head first, trusting my highly honed instincts and wealth of experience to carry me through to the next life, I suppose. For attempt number two, I was a bit more cautious and managed to make it to the jammer and get that button pushed. But this stupid plasma hulk gun staggered me right as I was throwing a gas grenade and well, y'all saw how that went. Here in our predicament and my increasing frustration, our ghost diver stepped up to the plate to take it out. So let's hear from him how he did it. I start to make my way into the map separating from the squad, but take notice of the significant struggle bus being ridden outside of this hard jammer. One of the greatest difficulties with jammers comes from not baiting a bot drop elsewhere before pushing them, forcing you to fight through a massive enemy force without the assistance of your eagles or super destroyer. Even if you're not a big fan of stealth, remember the power of diversionary tactics when you want to avoid situations such as these. Misdirecting bot drops away from the jammer before engaging the push will go a long way. Words of wisdom from a much more patient diver than I. This should go to show that a little patience and knowledge can make the game much easier. Team play and working together isn't just about putting together the best loadout and sticking with your team and playing a role. It can also be bigger than that. By grouping up as a community and sharing our knowledge with each other, we all get better at spreading freedom. Whether that's through making piles of renewable resources or by executing a lightning strike on objectives without the enemy ever knowing you were there. If this old dog can learn these new tricks, then any one of y'all can do the same. Play with an open mind and an open heart. 
but still keep an eye out for them traders. And you will have way more fun and success than you will just grinding away until you can mechanics your way through a match. But with the jammer handled, we once again split the fire team with my commandos and I heading towards the center of the map while K2 sends that gunship fab to the scrapyard. We clear the radar station after a brief fight, and we see a bot drop get called in further south. So we decide to take on the mega base while K2 hits the southwestmost bot cannon. This should have been a good division of labor, with us getting all the bot drops called in on the mega base while we convinced all the bots in there that hate and freedom only gets you a one-way ticket to the processing plant. This should have let our ghost easily infiltrate each of the big guns and take them out with hell bombs. But because we had terrible luck this game, this happened happens. Seven. Requesting orbital. No, you I'm about, they're, killing they're, they're you. They're just super samples. Yeah. Oh, the last one it looked like it was down. Uh. Oh no! My laser killed me for fun. It wasn't even going to the target. After that mishap, and in 4 learning what the super sample rock looks like. You have to hit them. No, you just pick you them up. They're, up. they're just oh, super samples. Yeah. yeah. Which about melted my heart, by the way. It was like watching my nephew take apart his very first constitution rifle. We call K2 back in and get a move on. With our whole team together, we make our way up to the mega base that Erevan informs us is called Easy Climb, for what I assume are obvious reasons. Shout out to the Blitz Divers and Zovac in particular for providing these great resources. But I'll let him tell you more about it. In our second game, I see the opportunity to get the team in position to silently take over the super outpost something you ideally want to get done at the beginning of any match. We've nicknamed this one Easy Climb. You can tell this is your map seed based on landmarks like the giant crane out front and the lack of any bunker turrets whatsoever. Making our way up the cliff together, we now have the perfect position to rain devastation down on the outpost from our new vantage point with a higher degree of accuracy than just hail marrying a 380 millimeter barrage into the center that would otherwise have been afforded. This tactic not only gives you more consistent results, but also gets the job done before any reinforcements can ever even touch the ground to bog down our game flow. And since we crawled up their backside on top of this mountain, we of course have the high ground. I have the high ground! This makes it much easier to shoot down into those vents. But most importantly, it means the bots can only approach us from a single direction with poor angles of attack, making this fight for the mega base much easier than it would be if we did my traditional approach, throwing bodies and money at the problem until it stops being a problem. Hopefully this goes to show that learning different play styles and how they work can drastically improve your skills as a hell diver. It wouldn't matter if I put another 500 hours into this game, I never would have had the patience to map out each type of outpost and come up with strategies to beat them. That kind of thing is only possible when Helldivers like you get creative and find new ways to smack the enemies of humanity across the face. So if you have a special strategy, loadout, or tactic that you think the Helldiver core might benefit from, drop it in the comments. Special thank you to Aravin and the Blitzdivers for their help and inspiration in making this video. I'll be revisiting the stealth playstyle soon now that I've learned from some of the best. And I'm excited to show off my new skills. But until next time, this is Commissar Kai, signing out.